I was, I was going to ask that because if one looks at the world today, yes, you see vast concentrations of money, yes, wealth, yes, uh, in a very small segment of of humanity, and the vast majority seem not to have a lot of money. Right. Um, is there something else behind that, or is it the fact that there's very few people today who have that ability to materialize vast amounts of, of money? Again, again, it's it's not an easy question to answer the way you're asking the question, because it is undoubtedly true what you say. When we look at the world situation today, we say we we can clearly see that there's vast amounts of wealth which are which is congregated in one specific area, or more precisely, um, it's the individual or a group of individuals, relatively small group, that have managed, one way or another, they have managed to materialize vast sums of wealth, which they then hoard before personal gain. But that now is the opposite end of the spectrum of what we've just been talking about. Mm -hmm. Really, everything we've, we've been talking about earlier has to do, when we're talking about personal power, uh, personal power uh, having the ability to be crystallized, into power. Everything we're talking about there is the natural flow of that substance of life, which we call money. Now really, money is just a convenient way that man has developed in which to barter. But if we go back to the ancient system of bartering, it might make this whole concept we're talking about much more understandable. It is much more a question of, you have something which I need. You have a particular skill, or you have a knowledge, or an ability, which I can make use of. So I come to you and I say, Russell, I need what it is that you have to offer. What do you want in exchange for me being able to access your skill, or your ability, or to make use of what it is that you have to offer? What would you like from me in exchange? That is the old-fashioned principle of bartering. Obviously, as time has evolved and as, uh, and as modern society has taken over more and more, and really by modern society, I'm not talking about society today, I'm going right back in time. But as civilizations grew, so people wanted to formalize their ability to barter, and hence people started to think of the concept of trading in gold and silver, and ultimately, of course, we got to money. Today we feel we've got paper money, which is really just a symbol of what is supposed to lie behind that paper money. So when we look at the concept of, say, um, hoarding, which is I spoke about just now, or the concentration of wealth in certain isolated pockets, what we are really looking at here is the impedance of the free flow of crystallized power, or money if you like. If you now take that back to the bartering system, what that quite literally spells out, and this is the shocking truth behind it, is that through whatever process was created, in order for the individual or small group of individuals to gather or to amass wealth for personal gain, the greater masses surrounding them have had to be impoverished mm -hmm. in some way. And the way invariably this has been done, and this is the shocking truth behind it, is that people have been disempowered in terms of the ability to be able to barter. And this is perhaps the greatest evil which has sprung up behind the concept of money as we know it today. Because people are no longer free or rather, they are free to barter, but nobody does it anymore because people have been led to the belief, rightly or wrongly, that to barter is a symbol of poverty. So unless you can pull out your wallet and pull some notes out, or worse still today, pull out a plastic credit card, you are seen as being a lesser citizen. So people don't barter anymore. They desperately try to earn money so that they can go and buy whatever it is that they need, whether that is food, clothing, 
or a service, such as hiring a plumber or going to the dentist or finding a lawyer. But really, all of this is so artificial. It is so man-made. And really, what I'm working towards trying to explain to you is that it was purposely and willfully set up so that certain individuals who have the know-how can actually amass wealth at the expense of everybody else. So with, where the world is at today, people cannot think in terms of anything other than money. So unless you have physical money with which to trade or with which to barter, you are a nobody. So people don't even think anymore that, hey, maybe I have a tremendous skill which is wanted by by the people, let's say, in my community. Let me sell that skill in terms of bartering. So in other words, I will do for you whatever it is that I have to offer, and in exchange I can see that you are growing some vegetables. So in exchange I would like some vegetables. You, on the other hand, I can see that you have an ability with the law. Now I will come and I will do for you whatever it is that you need me to do, because you also need my skill, but in exchange, I need you to take on this particular uh, situation for me and fight my legal battles for me, because I don't have your knowledge of law. But this is what I mean about disempowered. Mm -hmm. People have today so been pulled into the belief that they, they can't do this, that nobody does it anymore. So people are desperately looking for employment so that they can earn a little bit of money so that they can buy with their money what it is that they feel they need. And when they don't have money, they don't even think any further. They simply accept a mindset of poverty. And therefore it's not surprising that they end up living in poverty. And this really is what I meant earlier when I said, in my experience, and working with a big cross-section of humanity, when people are poor, up here, they are poor in every respect. Mm -hmm. And it's not because they need to be, but they have been so mentally conditioned into believing that the world revolves around physical money, that they can't think beyond anything else other than I must have physical money. And unless I'm going to steal it, I'm somehow going to earn it. So. It becomes such a vicious circle. circle. Because then people also, because they say they want to earn it rather than steal it. So they go into huge debts, for argument's sake, to get a university training in the hope that that university training is going to give them the ability to earn money. But nobody thinks anymore in terms of, but let me use my God given talents, which I have, in terms of crystallizing the power that I need. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So on the surface, it seems like a very useful tool. Um, but there's the trap behind it of thinking it's the only tool, if, if, if we're thinking of money. Yes. 